All right, everybody, welcome back to another video on Fibonacci. Uh, in the last few weeks, I've been posting a lot of videos, uh, or uh, I've been posting a lot of pictures that have the failed flag in it with my own uh, Fibonacci in it. And a lot of the questions that I've been getting back from those pictures basically is saying, hey, how do you, how do, you do that? How do you set your Fibonacci up like that? So depending on the broker, some Fibonacci's, you're not going to get a lot of choices on what you can and can't do. But on Thinkorswim, we have so many things that we can do. All right, so two ways to get to the Fibonacci tool. In the lower right corner, you can click on the active tool and pick this, Fibonacci retracements. It has that percentage sign. So that's one way to do it. If you have uh, a normal mouse that has a mouse wheel that you can scroll with called a, the scroll wheel in the middle instead of scrolling with that wheel click the wheel and you'll also see this menu so you want to click on Fibonacci retracements and then you want to left click on the chart now remember that on this broker where you start the drawing that's where you're going to see the 100% sign so you can see up here uh, on a previous Fibonacci drawing that I have on my chart the 100 is at the top. That's because I started the drawing at the top. So you want to left click the mouse wheel. I'm going to, or left click the mouse. So you can see I've got the 100 started. That's where I started right there. And as I move, it's updating dynamically. This is called a, a dynamic drawing tool. All right. Now, when I left click again, it's going to lock in place. For us to edit the Fibonacci, the first thing that I want you to do is just draw one. It doesn't even matter where it is. Just draw one, left click to start, left click again to end it, and get a Fibonacci on your chart. So like right there in the middle of nowhere, I drew Fibonacci. We need the Fibonacci on the screen so that we can edit the thing and make it uh, customizable to how you want it. Now that I have my Fibonacci drawn, I'm going to click on the Fibonacci. Notice how it changed, and now it's blue. It's not just blue, though. These little squares popped up, one where I started and one where I ended. Those little blue squares are what you can use to move the Fibonacci. If I grab just any of the lines, notice, notice my mouse. Right now, it's just a a black arrow and when I move my mouse around the black arrow moves but if I get into relation with what I drew the mouse changes into that uh, compass looking four grid arrow all right so that lets you know that you are in contact with the drawing that you made and if I grab that Fibonacci look I'm moving the entire thing all at once we don't really do that very often but what we do often, especially when we're day trading, is we want to shift where the Fibonacci began and, or maybe where the Fibonacci ended. And so if you grab the little box, you can do what I just did. You can reshape the Fibonacci without having to delete it and start another one. You can just grab it and move it, and it will dynamically update for you. All right? If you don't grab that box, if you miss it, and you end up grabbing the whole thing, you're going to move everything. That's not really, we don't really do that very often. You can do it. There's nothing wrong with it. But typically, people just want to uh, change their starting and stopping points. Okay? So let's go back and click on it. There's two ways to edit this. I can right-click, Edit Properties, and it'll bring up this. This is called a dialog box. So this is one way to get here. The other way is you can just double click, double click, uh, it's left click, double click twice, and you'll bring up the box. Either way you want, you want to get here. A couple of things to notice here in the dialog box. All right. One of them is that you can name it. I know it might not seem like it's very important, but if you have a lot of these drawn and they're from a lot of different time frames, if you named it when you built it, when the time comes later on that you need to uh, find out which one you are editing, 
you can just double click on it it'll pop up you'll see the name and you'll know exactly which one it is okay so that's one way to do things the next thing I want you to notice is that there are extensions so you can make this thing go out into the future to the right just on and on and on and on to the right side and same with the left side so if you change the uh, right and left extensions you can set that to just extend indefinitely the next thing is that you can set the values here you don't have to draw them on the chart and get precise you don't have to zoom into the tiniest detail to try to line up that Fibonacci you can just punch the numbers in all right so all of that's really good the coefficients this is where we get to the meat of everything all right here in the coefficients this is where you can add lines that's what those lines are called coefficients okay so in the coefficients order field you can set your numbers and and then save it and it'll always have those for you they'll just be there all the time every time you draw it your particular ones will be there again and again and again you don't have to go in every time and add in new coefficients and that's nice because once you get it set up the way you want it you can really become mechanical in how you use it because it'll be the same way for you every time all right so let's focus on that I'm gonna reset mine to factory default and this is a really good thing to understand if you if you're worried about accidentally screwing up your your Fibonacci don't worry at all it has a, a reset okay so I'm gonna reset mine to factory default and notice once I did that it's grayed out I can't click it again so if you opened up your Fibonacci and your reset to factory default is grayed out that means you are running on the default you have nothing to worry about you're fine you can just let it be and we can start making changes so now that I've reset to factory defaults I'm going to save that notice as soon as I saved it reset to factory uh, became highlighted again. it's something that I can use again I'm just gonna click it again I only did that to demonstrate all right so I'm gonna exit out of there and now we can see what a default Fibonacci looks like I don't believe that that's a default Fibonacci let's go back in there thinkorswim has been a little uh, wonky lately let's uh, let's go in and set the color for the curves no 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 let's not do that hold on let's just let's just reset to factory default done and delete it so now I'm gonna redraw it this is what we needed to do notice now it's reset okay I almost got you guys all screwed up now that we hit reset and we deleted what we had from now on every time I draw something it it is the reset default Fibonacci and that's what we're looking at right there a reset default Fibonacci all right notice that it's this kind of an ugly looking red color that lets us know just at a glance that yep that's the default if you're like me and you've changed the colors around then that's a good heads up because I don't keep it with that ugly default red looking color all right the nice thing is on thinkorswim that we can make all these kinds of changes now one thing to keep in mind that some brokers won't let you choose to uh, put the 100 at the top or the bottom and it will always put the 100 at the top or it will always put it at the bottom not all brokers are like thinkorswim they're not always going to give you that kind of choice okay but we're going to continue to do our business here on thinkorswim so let's just keep talking that out from here let's go back into the dialog box stop fill and start making some changes okay all right so let's recap we got a reset Fibonacci mine looks just like yours at this point and we want to go in and make changes so we want to go into the user dialog box right here in this we can change coefficients now I personally do not ever use coefficients this far away okay so instead of adding a curve I'm just gonna take a couple of these one thing that I want is a one two three six okay that that's often my target profit I also want an in-between 
That way, if my target is the one, two, three, six, I can aim for a 50% line. So 1.111. And then I also want a negative coefficient. So minus 1.236. Now what we've just done here is we took the coefficients that were already in the indicator and we just overwrote them. All right. Keep real particular attention to the details of where the decimal is and where the zero is. On different brokers, they might be whole numbers with no decimals. On Thinkorswim, decimals are the inside of the Fibonacci and whole numbers are outside of the Fibonacci. So from zero to one, one is a whole number. Anywhere between zero and one, those are all decimals. And then above one, is where we get into whole numbers or below zero is where we get into whole numbers with a negative. So now that I've got that done, now I want to save this as my default. I just click it once, it's saved. When I hit OK, notice this didn't change. So just pause. We want to, I'm going to delete that and now I'm going to draw a new one. Doesn't even matter where, Just I just want to draw a new one. I've got one, two, three, six, one, one, one. Notice I made a mistake, right? So let's go in and, and edit this. What needs to change? Um, the minus one. It's not showing up. Let's see. Let's see what's going on here. Let's get back out of that. Where is my minus one, two, three, six? That's what we're missing at the moment. Not sure why that's not showing up. We're going to zoom in just mad crazy zoomed in. See if we can uh, find that, that missing coefficient. It is definitely not there. We've zoomed in into madness. So we're going to delete that again. Go in, draw this. We've got the one, two, three, six, minus one, two, three, six. What is going on with that? Save that as default. So maybe we're not going to get into the negative coefficients today since it's just not drawing the negative out. And that's fine. We don't we don't need the negative. Ay, there it is. Way, 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 way down there. Okay. So we found that. Let's change that back to uh, I know what the problem is. So we're going to hit minus and then 0 0.236. All right. We were adding a 1, 2, 3, 6. We just needed to put this one right here on the outside. Okay, so there's our target in the other direction, the 2, 3, 6. So there's our Fibonacci numbers. So far, you should have a Fibonacci that has the 7, 8, 6, the 100, and then the 11, and the 1, 2, 3, 6. Now I'm going to open it back up. Since the 1, 1, 1 is a midpoint, I want to turn it into a dashed product all right so change the style properties right there and then we're going to hit okay and look at that notice that it's a dotted line now why would i do that first let me make it default so i don't forget to do that and we're going to delete this and i'm actually going to draw the fibonacci now and we would be looking for uh, a breakout opportunity maybe on a intraday instead of being on the daily so let's go into the intraday time frame and we're going to draw it again. So there's our intraday time frame. And if we're looking to trend trade, this would be our rollover event. We'd be looking for the market to come down. And this would be our target, right? So we pull the trigger. We get into the trade. Our target's the one, two, three, six. But maybe we want to deal with some risk management. And we decide, I want to exit some of the position at 50%. Well, the 11 is halfway. It's it's literally not perfectly centered halfway. You could geek out and put a little bit of math in it 
and figure out what's half of two, three, six, and make it that. We don't have to do that, you know what I mean? But we can. So we bring up the calculator. We got two, three, six, and we divide that by two, one, one, eight. Okay, so we'll go back in there. We've got one, one, eight. Let's do it uh, one, one, eight like that. Whoa. Let me re let me rephrase that. We're gonna go one 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 eight. There we go. So there's the middle right there. One 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 eight. Halfway between these two. Okay, and that's where the target would be to maybe reduce some of the trade, get some uh, profit out of the trade right there. Say we get in with one contract because we don't know if it's really gonna roll over, right? We pull the trigger. We start with one contract. And then we get that thrusting candle where it dumps down and we add more contracts through the breakthrough. So maybe we put three more on as it's breaking through. And then we get some risk out at the 118. And then we close the trade before we hit that final target. Okay. So you can see how the Fibonacci gives you all the structure that you need for the trade. But we're not done with the Fibonacci yet. Let's make some more changes. Now, I never use the 236. I don't want to delete it, though. I want it in there in case I do need to turn it on. I do a lot of coaching, and there's times where I need to show somebody else the numbers. So we just want to uncheck those and turn them off. We don't want to delete them, though. Okay? And we don't need this one out here right now, so we can turn that one off as well. Now, what we're left with when I exit out of this let's save as default exit out now this is our Fibonacci let's make some more changes though we'll go back in now we're gonna add a curve the first curve that I want is to put a midpoint for this negative so we're gonna click there minus 0 0.118 hit enter add another curve and now I want to add my sweet spot. I like the 70. So 0 0.70. Hit enter. Save as default. And we'll get out of that. Now look at what we have. Don't worry about the top up there anywhere. Just worry about this area right here. A 70 line pullback is a really comfortable position for me. I'm, I'm really comfortable with that pullback as an entry. And I'm kind of, I'm trying to identify if the market really is only pulling back or if it actually has set a low of a day and it's running back up to the highs. If you think about the analogy of a rubber band on the end of your finger, if you wanted to pull it back and shoot it at somebody, if you pull it back just a little bit and you let go, it doesn't fly very far. If you pull it back real far and you let go, it shoots really well. If you pull it back too far, it snaps and breaks. In this pullback, the pullback should not go too too far. A 618 pullback is the most extreme that I want to see. That would be that line right there. If it pulls back farther than that and closes on the other side, I'm going to consider that we're no longer in a pullback and it will have to prove to me that we are going to still continue to go down, okay? So the 70 is the sweet spot. That is the optimal pullback for me. It means it's the strongest pullback without breaking the trade. Notice where the 70 lines up also, right at that pivot point. So when I look left with that Fibonacci on the draw, notice where the lines meet. A 70 line pullback comes right into the bottom of that structure right there. It is the best spot to see the reversal. Since we didn't reverse there and we kept going through it, I'm no longer thinking that this is a pullback. Okay, so I really like that 70 line. The 60 line is the line in the sand. If it breaks and closes above that, I'm going to consider that the trend is dead, that we are not pulling back that this is not a pullback at all, okay? So let's open up the Fibonacci again. 
And now we want to change some things around. It defaults with the 0 being a wider line and the 100 being a wider line. I don't want that, so I'm going to turn that off right away. We're going to hit Save as Default, go back out, and now you can see they're all the same thickness. I'm going to go back in there again, uncheck the 618 because I don't need that. I'm going to set the color for all the curves. Now I'm running on a white chart, so I want a dark color. Black will work just fine. If you go from uh, white charts to black charts to uh, dark charts, make sure you pick something that you can see on both. I never like to choose black because I do have black charts and white charts. And if I choose black, sometimes I won't see the line. And I don't want to choose white because the same reason. So I could choose a, like a dark blue. That will show up on both. I'm going to do that. Save as default. Now, it's a dark blue. Every single one of those are dark blue, but this line is red. I want to make a change there. And the reason why is because when I'm drawing my failed flag setup, that is often the trend line for me so that I don't have to draw my own trend line. I want to make it not dotted, so I want a straight style. And then I want to make it uh, a color that I use when I'm drawing trend lines. I often draw trend lines with a yellow or an orange. So I'm going to make it orange. Save as default. So there's my orange line. I'll consider that my trend line. If that's my trend line, I now want to draw my channel. In a failed flag, the 70 or the uh, 78.6 is the top of my channel and the 100 is the bottom. I'm going to use the 786 and say that that is the top of my channel and the 100 is the bottom of the channel for the failed flag. We're going to, uh, oh, I also need to change that style to a dotted line because that's a halfway point. And we want that to be highlighted really big. And we want this one to be highlighted really big. For me, those reds just really stand out. Save as default. Now look what I have. My trend line is drawn and my channel is drawn. Okay. So far, we're lining up perfectly. Now, I want to do something with that 70 line. The 70 line is often where the Busby turns. Okay. So that's going to be something that I, I want to focus on. I'm going to make it green. And I know on this white background, that green is a little hard to see. I want it to be a little hard to see. I don't want it to be as obvious. Go back in. Now I'm going to change these two orange ones. I want that channel to really stand out. So three and three. And I want the width of that trend line to match those so that they all stand out together. Okay, just like that. Now you can see that channel really well. And you can see my trend line really well. Now that we've done that, we're good to go. You could choose whatever colors you want in whatever format you want. You do not have to do it the way that I just did it. Okay? These are the numbers that I use, and I have a very specific reason for using them this way. They suit me. I want to save everything as a default. I've locked it in. And now I'm good to go. When I draw this, I can delete this now. Every time I draw that Fibonacci, it's going to look just like that from now on. Nice and clean and organized, and it's exactly how I wanted it to be. Okay? Now, you might be asking what these negative coefficients were for. Why did I do this? So let's go back in to those for a moment. Save as default. There's my 236. Why did I do this? Well, there's a trading strategy that focuses on uh, the previous day's close. And Caterpillar is a great example of this strategy today. So here's Caterpillar. It made a great move yesterday. Uh, after lunch, it kind of stalled out, and it went into the close. And we could be thinking the next day that 
Caterpillar could rally back out. I instead of instead of having to uh, reshape my Fibonacci and change lines, I can draw the Fibonacci in reverse. Remember, normally, this is how we would do it, right? I would start at the low so that my 100 is down at the bottom, and it would have all of my channel and all of this down here, okay? But for this particular strategy, the strategy says in the Globex, we want to make sure that Caterpillar doesn't fall too far from this low or that it doesn't rally up too far from this low before the market opens and that when the market opens we're looking to see a reciprocation trade back up to uh, previous day's highs if it goes too far the whole thing is void we can use Fibonacci to draw those numbers for us and I can just use these negative numbers down here they didn't have to be the 11.8 and the 2.3.6. I can use those and deliberately draw my Fibonacci in reverse. Do it backwards on purpose because of whatever number I used out here. Okay. What that allows you to do is keep your normal Fibonacci in place so that you don't have to ever break these numbers. And you can use the negative side for whatever new thing you want to do. That way, you, in reality, have two different Fibonaccis. You don't need those negatives at all to day trade in the futures with the style and the strategy and the tactics that we use. Okay, You could just go along forever and never use those negative numbers. You don't need them at all. So keep that absolutely in mind. Guys, we, we have got it done right there. Look at that beautiful pullback tagging the bottom right there of the previous pivot pulling back just right at the 74, our reversal play. These numbers are very valuable numbers. The perspective that they offer is absolutely amazing. And if you set up your, your Fibonacci the right way, it will offer you so much help in your trading. You now know how to make those changes to Fibonacci and how to save your work so it always draws the same way every time. Guys, I appreciate your time. I'm sorry this video ran so long. Uh, I'll see you at the next video.